solution of our day, hesitates when he is asked to give a single example that increases the genetic information. Professor Dawkins, can you give an example of a genetic mutation or an evolutionary process which can be seen to increase the information in the genome? The truth is very evident. Life has such a complex design that can never come about by chance. A mechanical watch cannot be formed as a result of the coincidental assembling of cogs, and it proves that there is an intelligent watchmaker. Likewise, life embodies a superior design that proves the existence of a creator who has created it from nothing. The whole universe is the outcome of a flawless creation. The exalted wisdom, power, and knowledge of the creator shows itself in everything he has created. Even the creation of man himself is a miracle that discloses a fact that the theory of evolution strives to sweep out of sight. In the 20th century, the theory of evolution was refuted not only by molecular biology, but also by paleontology, that is, fossil science. No fossil remains supporting evolution have ever been unearthed in excavations conducted in every corner of the world. Fossils are the remains of living beings that have lived in the past. 
the skeletal structures of living beings whose bodies are rapidly insulated from air can survive intact. These remains give us information about the history of life on Earth. Thus, it is the fossil record that provides scientific answers to the question of the origin of living beings. The theory of evolution claims that all living things descend from a common ancestor. According to the theory, the origination of such diverse living beings took place through minor and successive variations over a very long period of time. The theory argues that first, the unicellular living beings were formed which then in hundreds of millions of years turned into marine invertebrates and fish respectively. These fish later had supposedly emerged onto land and turned into reptiles. The story goes further and says that birds and mammals evolved from reptiles. For this claim to be true, there ought to have been numerous intermediary species linking one living species to another. For instance, if reptiles truly had evolved into birds, then countless half-bird, half-reptile creatures ought to have lived at one time or another. And these intermediary creatures ought to have incomplete, half-developed organs. Darwin called these hypothetical creatures transitional forms. He knew that in order to support his theory, the remains of such intermediate forms had to be found in the fossil record. And the origin of species, he wrote, if my theory be true, numberless intermediate varieties linking most closely all the species of the same group together must assuredly have existed. Consequently, evidence of their former existence could be found only amongst fossil remains. However, Darwin was aware that the fossil record did not contain any of these hypothetical intermediate forms. This is why he devoted a special chapter to this in his book and posed these troubled questions. Why, if species have descended from other species by fine gradations, do we not everywhere see innumerable transitional forms? But as by this theory, innumerable transitional forms must have existed. Why do we not find them embedded in countless numbers in the crust of the Earth? Darwin had supposed that such transitional forms would be discovered when the fossil record was inspected more carefully. Subsequently, evolutionists that followed him examined geological layers all around the world for 140 years and looked for these missing fossils. All these efforts ended with great despair. The transitional forms imagined by Darwin remained just that, figments of imagination. English paleontologist Derek Ager admits this fact, though he is an evolutionist. The point emerges that if we examine the fossil record in detail, whether at the level of orders or of species, we find over and over again, not gradual evolution, but the sudden explosion of one group at the expense of another. The oldest stratum of the Earth in which fossils of living creatures have been found is that of the Cambrian, which has an estimated age of 500 to 530 million years. In strata older than the Cambrian, no fossils of any creatures except a few unicellular organisms are to be seen. In the Cambrian period, however, many diverse species appear quite abruptly. More than 30 invertebrate species such as jellyfish, starfish, trilobites, and snails emerge all of a sudden. These living beings have complex body systems, such as the circulatory system, and also very complex organs. 